Welcome everybody to the Comedy Pop-Up Podcast. Our next live show is June 5th at Malo in Silver Lake. For more information on this show or any of our future shows, please check out our website, ComedyPopUpLA.com. All right, let's start the show. Hey, what's up, party people? This is comedian Ron G, and welcome to another episode of the Comedy Pop-Up Podcast. Today we got an awesome show. I'm excited about both of our guests. I've known these both of these guys for a long time, and they're in the studio today. I feel very Lucky to have them. Uh, first up, my man, he was a finalist on Last Comic Standing. He was on Gabriel Iglesias. Oh, man. Uh, Comedy Central. All that. Yes, I am. Don't, on Comedy Central. Man, that's uh, weird. <laughs> he was on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon what? and the winner of Stand Up for Diversity for NBC. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. show some love for Nick Guerra. Hey. I Did I say it right? Guerra. Guerra. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't Guerra. actually a finalist on Last Comic Standing. I'm a blowing you up. believe that, though. I'm blowing you up. Why would you even? They saw the hair enough, they remember. Hilarious. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And then also in the studio, this is my buddy, man. I'm so proud of this dude, man. Uh, came out here hustling. Awesome. He's a hustler, man. Uh, from New York City. Uh, you might have heard him on Foxhole Radio. Uh, he was also in Stand Up for Diversity. And he's recently been on Laughs on Fox. Ladies and gentlemen, show some love for Nick Alexander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. Ron Jizzle. Hey, What's the up, young boy? Thundercat in the building. What's up, man? Being a young Thundercat. Bro, I, I remember, I've seen you so many times. Like, I remember when you first tiptoed out in L.A. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you finally moved, man. What made you finally move to L.A.? Um, I... In a way, I got too comfortable in New York, it, like psychologically. Um, I was don't be all extra deep for no reason. It, I, I have to because it, it really is kind of like, uh, it, it, you know how they say what works for you is, is, is what you say works for you. So like I was doing comedy in New York, you know, doing lots of stand up and yeah. whatever else came about. And um, But I was living with my grandmother. And to have the luxury of having somebody kind of like, in a sense, take care of you while you're just chasing it is, is great. But at the same time, I felt like, man, I haven't really been on my own ever paid rent and worked yeah. or gone through these hardships I've just had to just be good and focus on comedy and not be lazy and just deal with shit so I felt like I had to leave to kind of grow yeah and I just kind of felt like I hadn't grown as a comic and so I think that the only place paying rent was growing as a comic of course yeah. I mean <laughs> I heard so many comics I want meals every day and food I know I it's, it's stupid out. but so many comics would tell me like yo man when you get Go through some hardship that builds your character, and that's what will make you a stronger stand up. And when you go through life shit, so I said, Yeah, but, but you would go through that anyway. Maybe you subscribe to that? N- no. Like you got to go through? Because no. for some reason, I thought that a lot of the best comedians had the most drama in their life. And I thought there was a thing about, man, yeah. you need to have some drama in order to be a good comedian. But I was like, I don't want to wish that on my life just to be funny. Yeah. And right. that would scare me to be like, I, I need that because I, I kind of went through that too. I, I can, you know what? I've been, uh, there's times that I've been jealous of uh, people's material because I'm like, man, why can't I be that yeah, yeah. loose? Mm. But then I'm like, I don't know if I would want to deal with those consequences right. just to have the jokes. And I think whether you like it or not, you're going to go through hardship in life, whether it's, it, I mean, it's the whole Seinfeld thing. But then when like, he talked yeah. about life it, will he run was a train like, on you. He was, was, was like, yeah, I would have been. <laughs> God damn it. I'm not yeah. right for that. Seinfeld's Too like, early. <laughs> Seinfeld was like, would I be funnier if I grew up in Peoria in a, whor- a whorehouse? Maybe, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and two more things to that was just the lore of. Hollywood. I always, you know, I wanted to say I did it and not have any regrets. Yeah, like too. That, I could have just stayed, been a New York that's comic. That's why I did it. Wait until yeah. I'm buzzing and they 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 fly you out because they say you know L A calls you and I'm like, well, what? They don't call. Did me. they call you? They, they never called me. So they I text was, you. Yeah. They never texted me either. I just right. went out on my they own. Inbox you. No, they like photos. Hey, you you want to do a, you want to do a, a ten minute guest spot when you come out here? Hit me up. That, that was the inbox. right, right, right. Hollywood, right. Hollywood will like your photos, <clears throat> right? And you'll be right. like, why the fuck? Are, why is this kind? Why are you club stalking like, me? They thirsty. They like all my stuff. Hollywood is but thirsty. they never book me. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so, I see your name pop up on my notifications, <laughs> but y'all don't fuck with me. But right, you don't. Right. Me- I, I'm not good enough for your club. Okay, all right, yeah, right. So, so all that just was like, man, I just wanted to try it out. I just I had to just yeah. see if I could do it, and yeah. and that's why I visited. It so long because I really wanted to see if I like this place enough to just want to, you know, yeah, yeah. do yeah. it out here. And then I did. And, and so. I feel like there's a trade off between you can have the drama or you can have the peace. Right. And like you can have drama and have a lot of great material yeah. or you can have peace and have more emotional space to write really brilliant stuff. Mm. And that was the trade off for me. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I feel like my life that. was messy and the, more, the grown I got. And I was like, let me question my processes and all the issues I have is because of my own yeah. self sabotaging ways. So right. let me yeah. clean my life up. Uh, what about you? First of all, where you from, Nick? Texas. Okay. And you started Dallas. in L.A.? Or you started? I started in Dallas. Did you start with Tone Bill? Yeah. Yeah, he was Tone. He, he started. In, so y'all like in, same class? 
Uh, I think I was maybe a couple of years before him. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I guess we would be the same class in, of Dallas. What's to do yeah. with the hair? Who's on TV a lot? Um, uh, you're probably thinking Dustin. Dustin, yeah. 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 I started with, uh, yeah, Dustin, Tone, you know, I, I mean, I could go down the list of like Mark Ag, Cristela. Yeah, you know, Ag, Steve, yeah, Mark. Yeah, yeah. 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 And is there was there a big comedy scene in Dallas? Like, were you getting stage oh, time? Oh, it's a great comedy scene in you, Dallas. There's like six clubs. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Were you getting stage time like that? Yeah, in yeah, Dallas? yeah, yeah. And did you feel like you came to LA with something in your hand, or are you still trying to figure it out? No, I did. Yeah. I mean, I, I. What do you mean, like, with something in my? Like, hand? I, I yeah, always because well, I started in Atlanta, and so nobody saw my junk. People in Atlanta saw my junk, but nobody saw my junk in LA. So when I came to LA, I came here a monster, like. Cause oh, oh man, like you weren't Atlanta. going through a phase of young comic-y, like you already yeah, had nobody saw my college. junk yeah. out here. You I know was, what I'm saying? Uh, I got lucky and got on the road with somebody early in and learned how to be a comic yeah. before I came out here. So yeah. I, knew, I knew how to do it. But it was one of those things like Terry from The Ha, she loves saying, she's like, I remember when you came, you were funny. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you went away for a little bit and you came back and you were funnier. Yeah. And you went away for a little bit, you came yeah. back and you were funnier. Like, yeah. geez, that's it. That's the way you do it. What did, what did the uh, the road teach you? Oh, man. And did it translate? Because I know some cats have a road set and they try to do it in L.A. And it feels like, like you do this every night. You don't feel like you're like... Mm. Working on new stuff. It feels yeah, like it's you know what, man. I I uh, never had that because every time I did an open <clears throat> mic, I would try new material. So I trained You're myself. Weird. I did. I, I just not as good. I never felt like I see people do open mics and they will do this like the same starter joke that they do at regular sets. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if that works at a club, why are you fucking doing an open mic? Right. Mm-hmm. Anything that worked at a club, I would never do it in open mic. Uh-huh. And that's how I taught myself to constantly be able to be fluid with my set. Uh-huh. You know, so when I came out here, I was already fluid with going in and out of material. Yeah. So it never felt like a road set. Uh-huh. I did have to get out of local material. Right, right, right. You know, but that was kicked out of me the first time that I went to Louisiana. And I was like, oh, they don't know anything about Texas. Right. So do you feel like a lot of your uh, stuff translated when you got to L.A.? Because I had a lot of hilarious stuff that was funny in Atlanta, and I moved here, and I'm like, oh, y'all don't have gas stations where they announce the pump is ready to fill? Uh, y'all be <laughs> hilarious. And I was like, bombing at the comedy union trying to figure That's out what did I do funny, wrong. And in Atlanta, man. it was a monster. It was like my best bit. And then I got here, I was like, yeah, I got to start That local over. humor. It's, I got to start local. over. I, I was already out of it. Right? I, yeah, I think I came here with a lot of material... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I had the long hair. I think I had a few jokes about that being short and uh, music bits. I did yeah. a lot of music jokes. Oh, like when you break down lyrics to a song? Yeah, or or artists like, oh man, you hear it so much now. This ain't real hip hop, you know. I I remember <laughs> loving school. it. Yeah, 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 and yeah. One of my first jokes was like, or well, not first jokes, but out here was like making fun of Lil Wayne, uh, hilarious, and ripping him apart like crazy. And now I see people do that. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember when I did that. Yeah. I remember mm-hmm. when I would rip into. It's some, always a, you it's, know it's I crazy. like I can I think Cedric is the best at breaking down lyrics and doing yeah. his take on a music joke. Yeah, it's considered I guess now hacky to a sense, but I'm thinking if it's done right, I don't mind it. No, like, it has to be done right. Well, I think the problem. Like, I, I still love a good black people white people joke any day. Yeah. Week. I don't care how much <laughs> death right, jam over the right. day shit. Yeah, I, I love right. a good black people white people joke because if you notice, even the best comedians still at the root do black people white people jokes. Yeah, they just dude, do it on a more clever they scale. Do, or they just don't say. It. It's gonna say black yeah. people. Why do they don't but, do that? But, but like with uh, <laughs> with music lyrics, because there are the comics that uh, act, I I can't stand the comedians that act like they don't. They're confused by the lyrics. See, my whole thing is was the Carlin train of thought. Never be confused. Always know what you're talking about. Oh, Carlin okay. never was confused. Carlin never yeah, was, was like, I don't get why this is. He knew. Right, and he right. knew what everything. The deal? Right. Yeah, he never asked that. He was like, I know the deal. Yeah. And I will break down the deal in every single way. So I see comics that are like, what, what do you mean that you went out to the club at 4 a.m.? Aren't most clubs close? I'm like, don't be that fucking uh, weird. Like, right. it, I Molly don't on her champagne. Forcing the confusion. Molly yeah. on her champagne. That's right, nigga. That's right. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so what about you, man? Because I've, I've been to New York a few times, and the New York... I almost yeah, know you can talk like, about it. There's a New York style to me. Like I can hear it's very in your face. It's a little quicker. It's very pace. abrasive kind of sorta. New yeah. York and style is, is different. Uh, is tinier uh, stages. So they have to have more in your face <laughs> and abrasive. Yeah. LA, but it doesn't LA is a huge trait. LA because we like super sensitive out here. Right? Because it's the stage. Yeah. You know, like you can get swallowed up as a New York comic on the San Jose improv stage because yeah. it's so fucking huge. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're used to that. 
that little rectangle right there. Yeah. You know, it's just like when you get on a big stage, that stage swallows you. But not even uh, I never felt that. Uh, not even, it's the well, delivery. if you're a good comic, yeah, good, you, right, you right, can right. fill it up. Uh, yeah. Delivery, it was like, uh, obviously, in New York, the attention span is shorter because these people really... They appreciate comedy, but they really got to make you work. So it was like you learn the 6 LPM. You just you learn to work at a little bit of quicker space. But then when you get the chance to go on the road, you feel like, oh, shit, I don't have to go so fast. It's hard. I can take yeah. my time, let the biz breathe a little bit. Because in New York, you sometimes, especially when you're doing rooms, you fighting so hard just to keep their attention. Oh, and you, yeah. you suffocate your jokes at the expense of that. So, um, you know, when you do like mainstream or bar shows or alt or black, it would give you the chance to just kind of really work different audiences Find constantly. Yeah. But then when you get to go out on a road and you get to like finally take your time put together, like we can't wait, like because we feel like we're pumping so much and fighting with one one a.m. shows and midnight shows. So when we get that chance to go to like Fairfield, Connecticut, or some shit like that, and we get like a nice stage and two hundred people, people three hundred people, and people came to listen, it's like yo, we ain't got to fight. You know, it's like, ah, oh, and then you just let to see your shit come together. And you, we love it. Like, we, yeah. you can't wait to go on the road because it's like you're always fighting in the 7, the 10s, and the 12-minute sets. Yeah. So, like, and then I learned really early, too, like, just, you know, good comics who were just like, you can get real caught up in being very New york -y. Uh, make sure you're universal And even with these tourists, don't appeal to that. Just really always be universal so that you can go anywhere because when, as soon as you leave the, the, the Southern Mason-Dixon line, these people ain't gonna give a fuck about yeah. bodegas and shit like that. Like it didn't take me until like six years until I wrote like a train bit that I do that I could do anywhere. To uh, that was my first like New Yorky joke. I really yeah. tried to stay away from from uh, New Yorky shit and and being super dirty because I used to like say really blue shit my first year or two. My dude was like, nobody believes you when you talk about this shit because you yeah. you ain't got facial hair. Like they could tell you're young. Yeah. So give your time to. Really come up with some other shit, and yeah. then when you get older, then you bring in you bring in all the and sex. And I laugh when uh, New York comics come to L.A. and they start doing Puerto Rican yeah. and Jamaican yeah. jokes, but it's instead a, of because they already written their Puerto Rican joke, they'll say Latinos. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? You like it. Yeah. We don't Mexicans don't talk like that out here. No, that's, like, yeah. that's not yeah. that. Yo, accent. papi, papi, like they don't. There's talk no like that. What are you doing? Or hey, mommy. I'm yeah, like, mommy. Like we don't. No, we don't no. do that. That's Puerto Rican. Stop Puerto trying to force the joke. And that's why I don't. Yeah, I I made sure I don't do that. <laughs> absolutely, but, uh, absolutely. But I remember coming out here too, because it was always be like I get it from some other comic. Yeah, y'all New York comics always be coming here thinking y'all go do this and this and that. And I was just like, hey man, look, we got a chip on our shoulder. I mean, yeah, there's a little yeah, bit dude. of arrogance there, but you know, it's um, it, it breeds as well because you know we come out here and and we try to we do our thing and we could. You know, yeah, but every yeah. everybody comes out here thinking they're gonna fucking shut this town down. Oh yeah, in two weeks. Any comic that said, "Look, one it, five minutes set." Yeah, man. If there's Chris any Tucker. comic that that sh that, that everybody wants the that game, Chris Tucker shit. that gives somebody like a hard time, like, "Oh, you think you're gonna come out here?" You know, it's yeah. like everybody thinks that. Yeah. And you know, I used to get upset with L.A. based comics that had beef with comics coming into L.A. Yeah, because it's like, well, you never left. Right. You never felt the the how it is to be like. Upending everything, like goodbye, family, goodbye, everything that I that I well, that makes me feel. Yeah. See you later. You stayed in here, and you still have your homies from high school fill out the fucking shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right, know? absolutely. Yeah. We had to start from ground zero, and I always hated that. Like, well, then leave. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, if if you're so upset about people coming here, take yeah. a chance and leave. Yeah, and I, so I, I think conquering the stage was really. I didn't care like what what I got out of it, like blowing up whatever, because I knew those days were over. But yeah. I was just more so like. I used to hear about Chocolate Sundays. Like that even tri that, that came over to hey. New York. You hear about Chocolate. You hear about Mo Better and Trippin' and and then other just little rooms where they say, "Oh, LA crowds are d sensitive uh, too much," and sometimes New York guys can't translate. And I just like, well, I want to be a guy that can translate. And I always came out here and I just always That's did really doing, well. Man. And yeah, comedy is discovery. You got to learn how to adjust, yeah. man. Like even if your stuff yeah. works in New York, yeah, I've seen a lot of really dope New York cats come out here and it doesn't translate. Yeah, yeah. and I, I just because they I, get on stage with the chip. Mm, yeah. That's the problem. I, you yeah. see them get on stage already, like, because I've seen that with road guys who've been on the road for like twelve years, just road dogging it, and then they come over to L.A. and they can't shake that road dog chip. Right. So mm -hmm. they immediately go into the attitude that they carry with them into these hotel shows. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. the, yeah, yeah. hey, we're doing a show in the hotel conference in Odessa, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> 
right in the room. Right, right, right. So, and and they come in with a, a different chip of like, yeah, what's up, motherfuckers, yeah. right? And they don't realize, nah, man, that's not L.A. These it, people are near beaches. It's yeah. all lovely. Yeah, they're they're <laughs> in a life made positive hard. mindset. They're in a yeah. positive mindset. Yeah. And that's why when I like when people ask me, yo, how are the L.A. crowds? I'm like, they're pretty fucking easy, man. I, yeah. I, I honestly, I like, I never agree. got that, like, ah, fine. I think maybe the... If you leave Hollywood, if you leave Hollywood crowds are easy. If you leave and you go further into LA and shit like that, you might deal with some different kind of crowds. Like I've done the show like in Riverside, I did G Things Room. Yeah, you know, and I, that felt that felt like a room where you had to like fight to keep their attention. That kind of felt like New yeah, York yeah. to me. Yeah. But I mean, I'm, when we just talking about like Hollywood, SoCal, and, and crowds is easy, man. Yeah, it's, it's really true. like I absolutely agree. You got just cha- it's, it's up to you to challenge yourself. I mean, but I also felt point. like that in in New York. Right. When I went to go do spots in New York, I was like. Oh yeah! Uh, if yeah, if you're a good easy. comic, you're gonna translate. You're a good comic. You're a good comic. It's yeah. not like yeah. Is, it, is this but what this podcast room, is about? Is There's this a couple of urban rooms. Oh in New yeah. York? Oh, if we go into they rooms, intentionally it, it changes come up. not to yeah. laugh and ruin your self esteem. Yeah, and, and have you on suicide watch when you get yeah. up. in the in the club scene, there. bar scene. It's easy for sure. Or it, it's it's you should you should do all right if you're a good comic. But in these rooms, it definitely becomes another kind of fighting environment. I, yeah. I will not like brush off the New York rooms at all. Even if it's not what it used to be, but there's still some rooms that it's like man. Yeah, footprints. <sighs> you, yeah. Lose, you lose your soul. Is that the one that's in the Bronx? Um, no, footprints is one that's like deep in Caribbean Brooklyn. It's like a, okay. it's like a. It's, yeah, it's, it's one I went to. Like they had the video on the stage, and you like say, "Why are you not laughing?" It was like because I don't want to. You like, okay, cool, but why are you in the front row not wanting to laugh? Like I've had <laughs> what was it Cafe Lose? That was an old classic. It was Bronx the one room. in the Tina Graham uh, rooms, and oh, Tina it was Graham. really far away. Okay, okay. Like I felt uncomfortable when I got off the train. I'm like, I don't. I love. Oh, oh, oh you talking about uh, Mocha's in Harlem? No, I, it wasn't Mocha's. Mocha's wasn't bad. It was okay. just it's shaped funny, so it's hard to yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Each rocks out, but there's another feel, one. Yeah. It was really far away. Uh, <laughs> Nick, one thing I was going to say about you, man, is like yeah. every time I've seen you perform, like you have this I don't give a crap attitude about like you like yeah, on stage, energy. like you just free and I don't care, which is really dope. And yeah. over a while, it takes a long time to go from I'm scared to get on stage, I don't know what they think, to like I really don't give a crap. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. How did you develop that? I can't like. Does that come from? Like I played football, and once I got knocked out, I was like, "You, you know what? Y'all not about to knock me out again." And I like, yeah, I changed my mentality when I got on the football field. And, and sort of with comedy, when I started in Atlanta, I used to get booed. I used to get booed, and they told me to kill myself. And at a certain <laughs> point, I'm like, no, "This is terrible. not going to happen anymore." That's why I talk really fast, and I'm like, "You're going to laugh at me." That's why when I came to LA, I was like, "You can't stop what I'm doing." Based on what I came from, there's no way you can yeah. like not appreciate what I'm doing. I think I because had, I'm built for this, right? Yeah, I had what changed? I had that attitude when I first got to LA, and the same thing because in Dallas we were taught the same thing: laughs per minute, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. If you if you meet Dallas comics, a lot of us have that you know premise set of punch, premise set of punch, punch. Tag, tag, I, tag, I'm really tag, impressed tag, how tag. Tone tells stories and takes his time. Tone he does that, but shit. Tone also yeah, he said in the pocket. Yeah, he paid Manning with tone his jokes. Will, will be <laughs> he said in the pocket, and I think. I think I got to a place in my career where I've seen enough people laugh that when people aren't laughing in the crowd, I'm like, that's your fault. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'll look in the crowds and I'll be like, oh, if you don't want to laugh at me just because I'm early up on the show or you don't know who I am. Uh, in my head, I'm like, just know this. I'm the funniest part of this show right now. Right. Mm. And you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> <I like that. laughs> you know? right. And so I have that attitude of like, no, you're you're in my house. And yeah. I kind of have taken that. That attitude, and that's what's really made me change my comedy style is the whole, like, no, I know I'm funny. And if you're choosing not to laugh, that's something you need to reflect on. Ooh. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I'm still, I'm, st- I, I'm like, right about to leave the I still want you guys to like me phase. Yeah. I'm, for the most part, don't give a fuck, but a little bit still wants the crowd to like me. You, you want to know how to leave it, man? This is what you no, do. No, 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 no. But, but when I say, so, but uh, what I do is, like, I'm at the point now where when I'm doing jokes, I have to just learn how to cut some details. Like, you know how when you have yeah, somebody who just like, course. you don't have to tell me every part of the story. Just cut the fat. Yeah, and but my, my thing is it's, uh, it's just that I like just being vulnerable. So, like, I'll include, like, sh- shit that I probably don't need to, but it's just because I'm so comfortable on stage. Like, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. But I still want the crowd to like me even if I'm talking about some foul shit about myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, like, right about to leave the please, like, the kind of like me. Nigga, please. what were you going to say? How do you get over that? Uh, you know, you. Do. I have thoughts too. Th- this is what I do, man. Is that uh, I'll start my set, and we all have tester jokes or whatever, and we kind of figure out what kind of set we want to do before the show. So I'll start my set, and if 
if it feels like, because now since I'm headlining, I usually have to clean up a show. Mm. Whereas, you know, if I'm out on the road at some of these clubs, I'm stuck with openers and features that have never, they're like six months in mm-hmm. because the club doesn't want to fly anybody out. Right, that's that, so that you have to now? you have to clean up like forty five minutes of, of a terrible show. <laughs> Shit, so Make you, you work twice. Y'all as don't hard. smell that? No, yeah, exactly. Hot, so you, dude, I've actually started. Freshman? I've actually started saying that, yeah. but it's it's. I've gotten so used to doing that that I can see their faces doubtful of the entire show anyway. Uh. So I come in and I start my set, and I wait for the first person to try to chime in or whatever. Yeah. And I immediately have like an opinion on exactly what they're saying, and it reminds the whole crowd, like, "Oh, we can't throw them off with our with our cliched heckles." Yeah, mm. you know, like they try to throw you off with their cliched heckles because people have cliched lines for sure. You know, they'll they'll attack your sex life, your dick size, whatever. And if you already know your opinion, yeah. or if you already know a joke about you it, can't kill me. I'm already dead. Exactly. I'm locked right. and loaded. That's all it is. Right. And the minute that you rip, that you go off track and immediately address what they said, but with an opinion that is so perfect, yeah. the whole audience is like, "Oh fuck, no, he's here. He's yeah. a comic. Oh, he's yeah, exactly. Oh, he's in charge." And then I go right back to the set. Yeah. So it's that. It's that constant, like, I have my opinion ready to go, and that gives me the confidence of being able to handle any crowd. Because in my head, I'm like, yeah. no matter what you say, yeah. I'm going to be able to flip it into meaning exactly what I, And I constantly do it. Because yeah. I, I don't like people's cliched phrases. Like, if it's simple as, something as simple as saying, you got a small dick. I am one that'll be like, of course I do. Look at me, I'm 5'5". Five, five. How fucking big do you think it is? And I immediately go in, and what's the problem with that? And I go and I knock it down, and then I knock them down, and then I make them realize none of your insults are going to get me. Yeah. And yeah. so that, after doing that for, shit, for a few That's years, so man. It's funny. like a... um, You just learn. It's like kind of like a, a, a power forward when you got like a post move. And then they, the defense kind of give you something, but then you got like so many counters. Yeah, yeah. And as a comic, Bro. you have to develop counters. Like you I have got, counter snaps when the, the people at Chocolate Sundays come to you. Vicious. Yeah. This Attack on the audience, like, because I don't really mash on the audience. Do they come for you? I don't either. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but the really way not. I do it, right? You like, like if you somebody so yell out, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll narrate the entire situation. I'm like, the, this, the girl yelled out. Uh, while I was performing and I was like first of all I know you don't get any attention at home mm. so this is the only time you feel like you have a voice so you're yelling that right yeah. now trying to get any attention and everybody here came to see me not you so right now you're disturbing the peace and I said right now I have a choice to smash on you right now in front of everybody but if I do that your dude is going to have to defend your honor on the way home it's going to be really awkward so right now he's deciding on whether he want to say something right now and right now I'm going to give him an opportunity to make you be quiet because if he don't then I'm going to have to say something both of y'all going to be mad at me and he's going to be more mad at me because he got to defend himself and he looks weak and I'm like I'm like I'm going in and by the time I'm done the crowd's like, that's funny, man. You know what I'm Brungy saying? Wins. Yeah. I make I make them question what they say. Yeah. I'm like, so what did you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> and I make them explain it, and then I rip apart their explanation. Absolutely. And let them know, like, see, you have no train yeah. of thought. Yeah. And these but, are all the things that, like, what experience teaches yeah. us. Because a young Absolutely. comic it's is mileage. gonna just feel like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. I'm just gonna no, do my no, set. No. And you gotta address. Comedy is you gotta all address shit. Mileage and discovery. Yeah. Yep. And so what you mentioned about you're almost to that phase where you don't care anymore. Like yeah. I remember when I stopped caring, and that's when yeah. I started having the most fun in comedy because I am comedy. Everything about me yeah. is comedy. When I'm not performing, I'm funny. When I'm around my family, I'm funny. And so I shouldn't separate. I'm on the stage. This might not be funny because sometimes when I just talk, I say funny stuff and I'm not even trying. But yeah. that's who you are. When you yeah. get to yeah. the point where you're like, I don't care and this is how I eat. And when you travel to and you've been all over the world, you're like, these jokes have worked all They worked everywhere. Like, I got stamps on my passport yeah. doing these same jokes. And if you don't laugh, you got sewage in your soul and you're broken on the inside exactly. and you don't deserve me. And, and you know, the don't other thing me. is... Like, when you've had enough successful nights, yeah. you get to a point where your percentage isn't going below 90%. That's true. Nah, that's You're true. Like, what is it Steve Harvey said? Or what's my, if you, you, if you uh, batting, if you're doing, like like you said, 90% or, or, or when you're doing, like, a, a big crowd, if you're getting 85% of them, that's when you're doing great. Yeah. And, like, even, like, Charlie Murphy said when he used to, like, watch Eddie's shows, like, he used to get mad at somebody not laughing at yeah, Eddie. Exactly. He's like, man, you making 15,000 motherfuckers laugh and you ain't laughing. What the fuck is your problem? Like, 
So like that was yeah. Charlie Murphy. That was my Charlie Murphy. You, know you got no uh, scratching your voice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was young Charlie Murphy. Murphy. Young Charlie it sounded it very like eight year old Charlie Murphy. Yeah, yeah. Four, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's uh, Gusto Charlie Murphy. That's second grade Charlie Murphy. Yeah. Second, yeah. It sounded like TB4 it's Charlie yeah, Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. MC Gusto. But, um, but yeah, if you get an eighty five percent of the crowd every night, then you yeah, know, like you said, every, yeah, the you just learned that. At one point, it's like, okay. How many? When was the last time I bombed? Between the, this time I bombed, it's like it was a lot of shows that went well. So it's clearly I'm I'm doing. I'm doing my job. So for uh, both of you guys, you can answer either way. When did you realize you were funny? Like it's one thing because when I meet young comics, they like put me on the show. I was like, no, I'm not putting you on the show. It don't work like that. I said, come back when oh, you're you funny. Stand up funny. Yeah, and oh. I said, come back when you're funny. And they take it as, what you mean? I ain't funny now. I'm like, I don't know what you do now. But I'm like, when you know you're funny, when did you know that you were funny? Like on stage doing stand up. Mm, man, do you know what I'm saying? I think I always. You can do comedy, of- but then it's a, mo- a point where you like, you know, yeah. you're funny. And I always tell young comics, stay away from the main stages until you know you're funny. Do these coffee shops and these little small rooms. Yeah, and then yeah. when you get your weight up, you know what? come it, back. It's when uh, it's after I got off the road for the first time. Because mm-hmm. I at about six months in is when I was on the road. Yeah. You know, I just forced Which myself. Which is good. Yeah. That's so rare. So when I came back and guys I looked up to were like, wow, you got funny. And I realized, like, I'm in this bar at this open mic. And I had the entire crowd that was not paying attention to any comic up there uh-huh. listening to this story yeah. about me fishing. I was like, oh, I, I, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I, got, I got all of them to listen. Like, I got everybody to, to shut down and listen. I'm like, okay, if I can do this here. And that's when I started noticing when it's like, oh, I'm able to get the crowd to listen. Mm-hmm. So I kind of felt like, well, I'm on to something. I must be funny because the crowd wasn't listening to anybody. Anybody, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's that weird moment when you're like, watch this. This is what I do. Exactly. Right. And when you get that one, you know, biker redneck that has his had his back turned the entire time watching a TV that doesn't even have sound on, you know, and it's mm-hmm. a fucking Seinfeld episode and you're just watching it, <laughs> right? <laughs> to just turn and be like, all right, this this is then yeah. you're like, okay, I'm entertained. I got it. Uh, well, what about you, Nick? I, my, well, I, I'm gonna, I'm different because in New York, I got thrust into shows quicker because it's just like, I, you know, in LA, you gotta kind of do mics before you get shows, natural progression. In New York, when you just learn about rooms and you meet comics, you kind of just get on stage with the shows. So I would say, like, maybe like after a year or two, I got into this club that's considered like a very touristy club because it's like set in Times Square. Is that the New York? Comedy club? No, 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 no. They're more standard. They do like one or two shows a night. Carolines? No, no, no. It's uh, it's called Ha. It was called Ha. Now okay. it's called LOL uh, New York. And mm-hmm. this club had a different model than any other clubs. They didn't give a fuck about credits or shit like that. They just they paid shit and they did six shows a night. On, is that on, the one where they'd be on the street and just give you the? Well, there's like five of them to do that. But yeah, like, yeah. this club, six shows a night. Like even on Mondays, they start at seven. The last show is midnight. And on weekends, they maybe do like eight or nine. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. So. I got the chance to, as a young comic, I used to get is put on the lake. dryer? What is that noise? It's construction. It's, it's, uh, it's construction, man. No, they used, yeah, I think, I think if you like move your mic, drainage stuff. Oh, yeah, like, I have it off. Oh, you have it off? Yeah, oh, yeah, well, then yeah. fuck. It's we don't know what it is. It's, it's literally through. a truck park. Right yeah, it's outside. a truck park. Yeah, it's yeah. parked right there. Um, I bet you won't go mash on them right now and tell them, like, will you move? I really, <laughs> I really won't. I bet to. you won't. It sounds it sounds go great. Try. It sounds, no, Uh-oh. it's all right. You you'll, do be it. Fine. you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll Don't do it. And pull your pants up. You crack show. You crack show. That's disgusting, man. Okay, so what happened? So, I, yeah, I dubbed, I was doing like late shows at that club, 12, 1 o'clock with, with, you know, veterans. And I was like able to hold my own. And then I just got props because they kept with like, yo, man, it's the fact that you you coming in here. Because all the other comics that were young, you know, yeah. and they were they were white. They always got put on early shows. Right. Like the manager owner was privileged. Cool. Can, <laughs> but can we, can we that, talk I, shit about white comics? We could. Some, at some point in this. Oh, of course we could. I'm with it. <laughs> but we, so, but I always it. got put on the later spots. And yeah. for doing that for like a year and, and some change, that just made you strong. Because I'm really fighting with fucking yeah. 130 drunks, 230 drunks, and getting them to laugh for the 7 to 10 minutes. So after that. When I got to do like regular shows, yeah. and I was really doing my thing. I'm like, I know I'm funny. Do you feel like that made a difference in the way you approach comedy? Yeah, because um, when you do rooms and like in late shows like that, the your mentality becomes okay. If I can get this tired crowd to laugh, I know I can get a crowd that's fresh. Because if I'm getting laughs out of these people who've been doing shit all fucking day, they just they didn't want to go home, so now they're right. drunk and whatever like that, yeah. and then I can really get them to still keep attention and, and laugh to. 
something I'm saying for at whatever time it is, then I know that when I get the position and opportunity to do an 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock prime time at New York Comedy Club at Carolina's Gotham, of course, of course. I'm going to be like, funny. I got you. I'm going to be ready. What so. about you, uh, Nick? What, uh, what do you think the thing that took you to another level in comedy? Um, that took me to another level in comedy. Like, example, for me, when I started doing colleges, I was doing those nooner shows. Yeah. And they only came for free pizza, and mm-hmm. it's at noon, and it's like in a hallway, and people walking by, and nobody committed. Right, right, but right. Not having an opener, the microphone super low. Yeah. After a while, I was like, "You can't stop what I'm doing." So when I came back to LA, no matter what the situation was, like I was, I was crushing yeah. because trying to flip the I, I got prepared it was, in the trenches. Uh, you know it, what I'm saying? Like what? What it was, was the thing for you? It was closing out all these sh- these terrible shows. Yeah, that's really what got me was learning because there's a place where like if you're really and and I'm not bragging, you know, but you should. You know, we all know that there's a place where you get really funny that. Every lineup you're on, they want to put you on at the end. Yeah. Of course. You know, and it's anything from from two other comics to nine other comics. And when you're on those nine other comics and you're the one that keeps getting put on the end because you're like, yeah. nobody wants to follow me. I have to save the entire show. They yeah. know that I'm the one. And we all getting paid the same. It's a problem. Yeah. So, yeah. but that's where you learn like, all right, I'm the fucking, uh, I'm utility. I'm, yeah. the, I'm the ultimate, uh-huh. you know, and I've learned how to. But I'm like, you're going to pay me. Well, yeah, then you start getting, demanding. If we all well, now, get paid now, the same thing and you want me to go last, like, no, now I, I even, I Well, now I, I, yeah. I tell people I'm not going last. Yeah. Like, now I'm at the level of comedy where I'm like, if you don't pay me, uh, then I'm going up second or third <clears throat> and fuck the rest of the comics on the show. <laughs> save your show. <laughs> save like, you. I'm just going to do my and you're shit gonna and I'm going to pay me the same leave. thing. Like, yeah. I like that. That's a good, I like, I like that. I, I have some friends where, like, you know he's he's an older comic, but like when we do shows, I'll see his name lineup be his name be like maybe third or second or last, and then then I see the booker go to him and be like, "Hey man, do you mind switching with this guy?" Yeah, and I'm just and then he just like, doesn't nah. understand it. I'm like, it's because they don't want to follow you. Yeah, man. they don't want to work that hard. Oh it's, sure, it, they a, have a, it's something a weird wrong with their thing throat. To feel, I don't give a crap. And I, and I think and I was telling uh, Greg Wilson this actually the uh, the Greg Wilson the Greg Wilson. <laughs> I said the ultimate just, the ultimate compliment in comedy is when you're doing a weekend at a club and the owner walks up to you like Saturday early show and is like, uh, all right, show started. I'll see you later. I'm going to go home. Uh, the manager has your check and uh, it's great working with you. And they leave. Absolutely. That means they trust you completely as a headliner. Absolutely. They're like, mm. I'm going to go home and go to sleep because right. and having you here is not stressful at all. See you, see you in six months. <laughs> Absolutely. I That's agree. a weird compliment when people stop watching you. When people are like, oh, he's on stage? All right. Let's, uh, let's go. That, yeah. When the features come in the room, like, dude, like, dude, that was awesome. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because sometimes you don't realize you're dope until you leave L.A. That too, man. But I also, in LA, I still think, I'm like, eh, I hope it's okay. Well, well, that's the part of comedy. But I feel like in L.A., you're... As much as we don't realize, we're performing with the top tier of everybody in the nation. Yeah. Now, granted, a lot of L.A. comics are more personality than jokes. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's entertainers. Right. Like, but L.A. is about entertainment. It's a lot of cast. Well, my agent said I should be on stage. Like, I'm... That you in too. the way. You in yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But a lot of the really good comics are here, so you don't realize how dope you are until you go to a small town, USA, with these features that basically all have the same set of people that you admired growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you like... Y'all ain't talking about nothing. Yeah. And then you shine there, and they're like, man, like, you're doing your thing. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah, and you man. come with TV credits, too. They're like, wow. Yeah. Like, you, oh, should but I then, move to but L.A.? Then, but then you go to the hotel they got you. You're like, man. Right. <laughs> this, uh, this is what being a good comic is. Oh, absolutely. This is so that's, a, that, that's the shittiest part about a hotel being a good a comic, hallway. man. Yeah, yeah. Is that when you're a shitty comic or a mediocre comic, you know, you don't get asked to go on the road, but at least you have the comfort of staying home and being <laughs> being the best at an open mic. Open right? mic legend. Yeah, in L.A. Are you being the best at the showcase yeah. on a Friday because everybody that's working is out of the town, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, when you're a great comic, when you're a good comic, it sucks because it's that whole thing of like, well, now I got to go perform until I'm famous. I got to go do all the off nights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to do all the... Tuesday. Tuesday exactly. Wednesday, or I got to do all the nights where they're saving money so that they could pay the bigger headliner. Right. I got to do all the weekends where they're not going to promote it because they're saving that money. And trying to pay for, their pay for the room. Most exactly. disrespectful thing. You headline that weekend and your name ain't on the marquee. The bigger you know, name comic for the next week is on the marquee. Yeah, so you're, or, or you replace them last minute. Exactly, yeah. man. So you're, you're a great... They know you're a great comic, but... Without the clout. You have no... Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you have no draw. Yeah, it's like so, no, you're great. 
But but you're three star hotel, two star yeah, hotel. Exactly. We love you, but you know, don't order don't order two things off the menu. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> What's the worst hotel you ever stayed in? I remember I did a s I was at a uh, in Lancaster Ooh. PA. I got to open up for um I did two shows there. One of the times was for uh, Witherspoon and Tommy Davidson or Collier. One time was for Witherspoon. The other time was for Collier and Tommy. And both times the promoter nigga put us up in the Super 8 motel. (laughs) And uh, man, when I tell you, we felt like we was going to get set up and just robbed. Because, of course, they put them in the Marriott where the fucking show was. But we had to go go to the Super 8 and like... We seen niggas hanging outside and like one door, hotel door had like a hole through it. Mm-hmm. And uh, nothing worse than bottle. seeing people hang outside at a hotel. <sighs> yeah, right like, by your oh, room. Right by the room. 20 other rooms bed. down there. You hanging in front of mine. Like, why are you? Why what about are you, you Nick? What was your worst hotel? We had to experience? put all our shit in the car. We kept it in the car. We were like, all right, before we go to, before we leave the show, we're going to take everything, put it back in there. When we come back, we can put our shit back in the room. Yeah, that's the worst. I went to go do a gig in. Modest, no, not Modesto. It was somewhere up north. Uh, <laughs> and the hotel, the room that they got me, because it was a show that was a hotel, a restaurant. The room and that they room, got me yeah. was attached to the restaurant, not the hotel. Hilarious. Right? And it was like the owner's. Storage closet. Basically. So there was a bed <laughs> in there. The owner's quarters. There was a, living quarters. There was an out-of-order jacuzzi. The in in the bedroom, right, with a okay. mop so and there was leaves everywhere as if like in the room. In the room. It just looked like terrible porno was shot there. That's so you know? funny. Yeah. Yeah. And there was like uh cleaning equipment in the shower and stuff like that. So they obviously were just using it for storage. And I just was like, we're just gonna go back home. That's hilarious. I've, I've, there's so many times that I've just left. You can't just, yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah, I just say, yeah, fuck the staying in. I'm like, if it's just a one, one night, fuck it. And I'm right. that's why I always take people with me now, just in case Help the hotel Help me with the drive sucks. back. And just like, well, let's just go. Yeah. I, I'd rather I, be I in bed. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. I had a uh, hotel. I forgot. I think it was like in Texas somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I always clown because I feel like the wallpaper had uh, oh. alopecia. <laughs> like it had bubbles in it. You know, you see bad yeah, window yeah, table yeah, bubbles yeah. in it. So it would fall off. It was so bad. First of all, I don't like any hotel that doesn't have a hallway. Mm. Where you can see my room from the street. I don't like that feeling. Okay. Uh, black man trust issues. And then I had to ask to borrow an iron. Like, it wasn't mm. even an iron in my room. I had to go to the That's weird, right? office That's and be like, hey, can I borrow the isn't iron? Isn't that weird when you got to do that? When It's, it's, it's like, like 40 who rooms. Who fucked up this iron privilege? It's 40 rooms. Can I get some soap? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, That's yeah. not going to feel Can itchy? I borrow a TV from my room? Can you just push the TV in there? That's I just wanna, funny, man. You'd be scared to sleep on the center of the bed? You're like, yeah, I'm not man. sleeping on the center I remember of the bed. I stayed in a hotel where I was walking around barefooted, and uh, when I jo- jumped in the shower, I noticed that my feet were completely covered in soot on the bottom, oh. and it was on the carpet of the, of the hotel room. Yep. And I was like, yep. God damn. Has that, okay. Oh, that window unit AC that drips inside the room, and <laughs> oh, it smells man. like mildew? That's, God, uh, why are we doing this, guys? You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna ask. Here's a, here's a question I want to ask, right? Go ahead. Because dealing when I was, I never got the chance to like be a feature for headliners. Like I haven't had that opportunity to work with a guy and tour or whatever like that. I had like it'll come. I've had a couple of you know times where I got to go out of town and shit like that in the yeah. East Coast, but never like really worked the country like you toured in the way you've toured. Mm-hmm. So um, my question is that: Have you decided that I'm gonna take this route of trying to make it work in LA, making money, making a living here? Until I blew up, so that by the time I'm getting on the road, it's it's a lot better as a headliner, or like, yeah. you st- are you? Do you still like? I'm still gonna just cut my teeth and grind and build my following up organically, like the way. No, no, no. I, I'm like, I, how did, how I am how's your strategy. Like, I am only in Hollywood to see if Hollywood's gonna work, and I'm already trying to figure out an exit plan. Okay. Like I'm already like, okay, all right. I I have learned. Thanks to being given the opportunity from some of the credits I've had, I have learned how to work colleges, work cruise ships, work military shows, work clubs, mm-hmm. work. You don't uh, have to be here. Yeah. So I know how to. Make so a now, living. Right. Yeah. So now I got that all set up. So basically my plan is either Hollywood works out for me or I get maybe one or two more credits that I can solidify these gigs and yeah. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm going to travel abroad. Yeah, her the next step is traveling abroad. And just, yeah, and and just, just be and like, just fund your own specials. Kind of like, yeah, if I want to. Or whatever. Yeah. If I want to, or just being like, fuck it, man. You yeah. know, like, I'll just be one of those guys. Like, that's the weird debate. I might be a road guy. Am I just going to be a road guy? Yeah. And I, and, and, and I don't want to. Mm-hmm. So I'm going, that's why I'm sticking to this Hollywood plan as much as possible. And like you said, growing the following organically. So now it's kind of like, you know, I know the tools uh, so that at least I'm not starving. 
Yeah. The next step is either I'm going to make it or I'm going to be able to just have a fan But also, base. too, you I have, wanted you have to realize yeah. you've had enough success in L.A. where, like, you're supposed to be here. Like, me watching that you win Stanford University and being on Last Coming Standing, which is not easy. Yeah. Like, those are, like, sometimes I feel like Nuggets got to give you, like, you're supposed to be You just got to do it. Well, th- that's the thing. You just got to pay. The, that's the problem is that's the one fear is, like, in the end, uh, if you stay here long enough, you'll find a place. Yeah. You know, the, the, the fear. The, exactly. There's it's just, just no date on it. It's just you're gonna be there. Yeah, yeah. But you just have to stick and yeah. I said for, I said F being a, a road warrior. I'm just gonna stick it out here and just try it's to build. Things, man. I don't. I don't want to be the 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 run road warrior. Right, I don't want right. to be out for months road warrior. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't mind being like okay for two weeks. I'm gonna go and then I'm coming back yeah. for for a month. Because what I told myself was. When I when I decided to move to LA, I was like, okay, I need to know that I can handle a certain amount of time and have built have this amount of time built in, so that way as I go along and becoming an an LA comic, like I'll always know how to do stand up and yeah. be funny. And then when I get my chance to go out there, it just take me some time, some repetition, but I'll get it because I already have enough savvy to, to figure it out. Yeah, man. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like that's why I didn't want to come. Out. I I could have never came out to LA Green and and like two years in and figured out because that would have just been like I would have yeah. I would have went crazy. But doing it after to six, seven years, you guys in college. How long have you been doing stand up? I'm like eight and some change now. Okay. But like yeah. New York years are different. So Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your first th- if you if you really getting on like that, your first two, three years in New York is like five years anywhere else. Okay. Because I was just getting on three, four times a night every night okay, for like yeah, yeah, five, six you. years. Yeah, you know what yeah I'm time there is a time and, difference. And then, and then working with those guys that you work with is 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 yeah. The the experience is invaluable. It's, it's just like and to headlining answer, row gigs is a weird. It's a different time yeah, frame right. too. Because and, and right. to answer your question, man, it's, it depends on what you want for your career. Like right. honestly, it just comes down to what you that want too, for your career, like, or what, or, I, what you, or what you're happy going back home with. Right. And so you know, like I've yeah, traveled. Mom, this is I've done a I lot do. of colleges and clubs, and I like the road. I like. I feel like it makes you sharp. When you come back to LA, like you're a monster. I've seen a lot of my buddies who are okay comics go on the road and they come back. They're animals. And then you get to a point where you like. Especially when you're pre-famous and almost there, yeah. they're like, "Well, we'll let you headline this club, and they give you what, 1,100, eight shows, don't promote you, and you perform it from like Tuesday through Sunday." Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're like, "Okay, that's cool," but for a thirsty comic, when you haven't done the role, you're like, "I'll take it." You but then it. when you start doing life, because you're gonna have a point where you're like, "I'm chasing all these trophies, and I have no memories. I want a family. I want a girlfriend. All yeah. that stuff." And then you like, "What I want my life to look like." So. For me, I want to have a family, and I want to travel the way I want to because oh, I don't want to be gone Tuesday through Sunday. So when I travel, I'm going to be gone Friday, Saturday. You can make six shows. I don't care. And then I'm going to go home with my family on Sunday. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I chose to change my schedule because when I did colleges, I did 100 in one year. My life fell apart. Oh, I made all this money. Dude, I, I made yeah. all this money. My friends stopped calling me. I didn't know what day it was, it, what hotel it. room was. And I was like, I don't like this feeling. So I yeah. said, I'm going to try to learn how to make money in L.A., which you can make a lot of money. A lot of New York comics – coming out to L.A. pissed off like you can't make no money you can make yeah, a you lot can. of money in L.A. Just, just I made more money out. in L.A. than I did doing stand-up from doing crowd warm-up voiceovers TV film commercials like I do a bunch of other stuff every day I get a check from something but don't nobody yeah. tell you that so you got to figure out or, how just, to, or just doing a lot of SoCal rooms right or you you're like to, in the, immediately Hollywood well, you LA's more of a money, showcase city you, you don't make a lot of like, money doing if showcase if you go like yeah, Brea, Hollywood. Irvine San Diego anywhere an hour outside of LA hours. North yeah. South East you're six West. hours from Arizona you're three hours from Vegas yeah, yeah you know like you can make money yeah yeah, when I yeah. set my life up to where, again, right. I'm going to do enough TV, so when I start doing the road, you're going to pay me for leaving L.A. It's you know, a balance. You're going to pay me, like, I want to get, like, I'm not leaving L.A. for less than this amount. Yeah. It's not a that's, conversation. That's where you get But to. I had to earn that because, again, I chose to not go on the road because I want to work on my craft and take acting classes, and now it's happening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm still living off of money from 2015. Yeah? From the colleges, the holding yeah. deal. Yeah. And I learned, like, that's that's my gauge right now is that I make enough money to keep the money I made in 2015 at the same level, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The minute that that depletes mm-hmm. is the minute that I give up on Hollywood. And as long as I keep this level, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So oh, I, I kind of like, I've given myself a trust fund. There you go. Yeah. yeah. But that trust fund will last. But it all changes, man, because if you notice, even with social media, like how it looked in 15 doesn't look, look how it looks now. No, yeah. no, no, no. Like everything. Well, is you different. live. You live. If you if you're a low level headliner, you got to live like a feature. That's crazy though. I, I always always you have to live, live with your grandma. Always you have to live, live under your, your grandma means. to be a great feature. Hey, no, hey no, man, no. I'm moving back to New York. <laughs> it's no it's man. Different. If you well to get on the road, dude. You like 
first off, you're somebody's gonna have to vibe with you. They're gonna have to yeah, want yeah. to be around you personally. For sure. It's not yeah. so much about the the whole. They're gonna be like, he's he does this. He's great. And some some headliners are like, you're either indulging with me in my demons, yeah, or you're making me you're making it easier for me to indulge in my demons, mm. right? Yeah. And for anything, it could be like, look, go get the girl with the blue dress on for me. All right. There's no, those like, guys like crashing, right? A little mm, bit. Exactly. And there's yeah. guys that party with me, or there's the guys that are like, look, I don't want to talk to you, but if you set up my merch, you're on the road with me. Yeah. Or there's some, oh yeah, yeah, you know, guys. like there's just stuff. You do like a little that. bit of work, but it's it, it's beneficial in a way if that's what you're seeking. Yeah. It's like, like, oh, you're gonna collect emails for me? Oh, great. Yeah. I, I didn't even think about that. Like, but wh- then you keep those emails too. <laughs> one, like, like one of the funnest headliners, I think, because I've worked with him, but not on the road. But I know he's just he takes care of his people. Tony. Like I always hear the best stories about yeah, Tony yeah. Rye. Because what he'll do that is dude's Mr. Hospitality, man. Yeah, man. He he looks out for you. He'll throw you a little yeah. extra. You hang out with him. You, you know, you go get bitches together. Yeah. Hang out. You know. I think you learn that too. But now everybody's like Tony, and I, and I can't really be as cool as Tony, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of cool headliners that I've learned. I think it's changed, man. A lot of a lot of guys were mistreated before. Back when it was like, <laughs> yeah, they were really they were mistreated. Coming, yeah. yeah, they were and the now, abusing and they became the abuser. Yeah, right. now there's a lot of headliners now that are like, no, I went through some shit and I want to make sure you're okay. That's how I feel about Cat Williams, man. Like, Cat Williams probably went through a Dude, lot. I, I went but one time Joe. I was at the comedy store and he gave me a stack of cash. And I was like, what's this for? And he was like, his assistant gave it to me. And she was like, well, Cat knows it, it takes a lot to be a comic and he wanted to bless you. Wow. So I'm like, yeah, for, man, for him like, to even do that and didn't have to, like, I'm very grateful for Cat to doing that. Like, I never yeah. went on the road with him. But I still think it's dope when comics reach. He just back. saw you that night and decided to give you some cash. Just gave me some cash. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. thank you, right. thank you. So listen, man, if you're tuning into right now, this is the Comedy Pop Up Podcast, hosted by comedian Ron G. In the studio, we got the two Nicks, Nick Alexander and Nick Guerrero. Man, we're talking about comedy. Did they just the, tune into this? They just tuned. If in. you tune in, always do that. I reset the show. Yeah, right. through the show. Yeah, so okay, let me let me, let me finish. This. Let me okay, finish. Okay, go ahead. So, all right, all right. Uh, all right. I want to change gears just a little bit, sure, and ask you. Um, so both of you guys left home to come do this. How does it affect you to leave home and notice like you're missing out on so much life? Like I don't really realize how been out here, how long I've been out here until I see like my best friend's sister graduate from college or you I know, know my friend's getting married. Does that affect you at all in your journey? Or you just keep your head down and keep going? I don't. You don't care. feel like you're missing out. You know what, man? I only have a handful of friends that I care about from my. Back in the day, yeah. and they just started, also just started having the life. Like my best friend, who I haven't talked to in a bit, but you know, he's one of my best friends, never had a kid, never anything. So I've kind of like kept a group that never fell into that. Yeah. You know, and so it was easy for me to be like, well, none of my peers yeah. are, are developing families. Yeah, there's a, the few that did, but I was never that close to them. Yeah. I, they probably think you're living like a rock star too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. not married. You're chasing your dreams. Yeah. I'm in a weird spot because uh, I've honestly never really been in a serious relationship. And I think about it some days. Some days, I, some days it's just whatever. Um, you saying you be on these hoes? Is that what you're saying? I, I, yeah, I've had some fun since I've been out here. Ah! <laughs> Having your own spot and shit. Like, yo, this is all new for me. So I've, <laughs> I've Randy's really, not coming home tonight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I used man. to have to. This When I used to be in New York, man, I had to. This is how tight my game had to be. I had to convince a girl to come with me to a short stay, which is where you could spend like 60 bucks to rent a room for like three hours. That's hysterical. That's, that, you have to have a good game for that. Yeah. Man. So, you know, coming here now and like fuck, finally having my own spot. Being able to bring chicks back. Oh, it's the best, isn't it's, it? I'm, I'm just getting enjoying that. So it's like, shit, I ain't ready to get cooped up. No, nah, man. I finally got my own fucking place. Yeah, <laughs> and I ain't got a fucking, that's, my that's boys' the, places no more. Or that's the funniest part of when you start meeting girls is that you're like, yo, I, I'm i getting a lot of attention. Why yeah. Why do you think I want to just be with you? That's when they really want you. Yeah. But you're like, fuck, I'm, get, I'm really but, enjoying this. But then, I, you know, I meet some, some really cool women, and so it makes me go like, oh, you know I'm? Relationship might not be so bad. I just I don't know if I'm not ready for that. It's just it's work. Like yeah, no be, one is ready. It's another work. To, man, to, yeah. to, I feel like it's less job. work than chasing. Yeah. Here's the thing: I don't chase that much though. Like I, I'm yeah, pick, I, 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 I pick my spots. I don't chase. So that like much I have either. excuse me. I have nights where yeah, me and me and my you know my boys are going out Saturday. All right, we're gonna hit this party. We're gonna you know chase some girls. But I don't party every night. Like a lot of okay. times I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working. I either hit a comedy club First or the I stay maintenance home and watch TV shows. Maintaining. Uh, or you go to some fucking screening for a TV show. That's how you get caught up in chasing because there's always some screening out here. Everybody want to go fucking hang out, and then you know, you, then they, all the chicks is dressing up because they want to kill it on the fucking carpet. Yeah, and you just be like, God damn! Like, look at all this. 
right. fine ass females. And you, if you get to, I got, I'm not at that level where I'm going to all the screenings. Like I got, I got like one good screening a month. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> you got a screening that's to go to fine, tonight, man. See, yeah, you gonna, you gonna, yeah. but you're good now. So I'm great yeah. right now. So yeah, that's. But fine. for I'm, me, it became a headache much. because again, yeah, depending on who you mess with, they they gonna fall in love with you, and, and, you gotta, and, and also love. deal with that, and that's a distraction too from what you're trying to do. And it, it's going to end one day, right? You but got, I think the, the position that you that you you were in at one point will kind of like because you know you everybody knows you Ron G. You used to be the R and B guy, and, you know, <laughs> and, and, and you're a great comic, great host, thank you, and, bro. And, and personality. So like now that especially with chocolate, you know, being a place where that was like that's your hub now. Like yeah, yeah, you know, girls can find you. Yeah, and. That puts you in a position where you kind of have your pick of the litter at, at one point, I'm sure. Right, right, right. So, you know, you had to go through that phase of, you know, whatever, being a man, this is my yeah. shit. And then you, then you're all right, all right, I, I, can't, I can't do this no more. So, but I value privacy and I value peace. Exactly. And I wasn't yeah. getting that. And I was like, I can't do that no more. Yeah. I need that. Because right, right, right. I've said hello to a girl, got her number. And by the time I got home, a girl hit me like, I heard you met my friend, man. Y'all exchange numbers. I'm like, nah, I don't want that problem. Shit, that's a lot. Yeah. But before I get home, yeah. didn't even talk to her yet. And I'm like, nah. Yeah, I, uh, it's weird. Have, it's a weird feeling. Like everybody know you, but you don't know them. Mm-hmm. The vulnerability, because what we haven't talked about is every level of success is another level of vulnerability that you, you lose. Most people can't handle. Uh-huh. Like I seen a big name comedian drop a special, and everybody was like, "Oh, congrats on your special! It was great." And then one comment was, "Yeah, you said you weren't gonna do this material anymore." And this person, out of three thousand comments. Went and commented on the one comment gave of him that well, I was saying once I'm done with the special, I'm going to end the material. And he was like going back and forth, but just that level of vulnerability, the fact that you come like out of all these comments of yeah. great job, your special is dope. Yeah, they I went to that one like it's a vulnerability on the, on the negative, right? But Dude, it's just, I, I that's stopped, our life, man. This person's I have rich. Caring, yeah. I I have. Uh, it's funny. I went through that the first time the Life Factory put up a clip of mine that because mm-hmm. they just start. You can't read the comments. Yeah, you can. You'd be right? on suicide watch. <laughs> and I remember facts, commenting back, facts. and then I learned, you know, like don't read it, and if you're going to respond in such a way that they don't, that you're out trolling them, kill them with kindness in a way. Not yeah. even kill them with kindness. Kill them with with non sequitur attitude. Like ah, okay. it's so left field that they're like, I have no response for this. <laughs> yeah, like I completely, I see what your insult was, and I'm gonna tag it up. And they always have the friendliest con- cartoon characters as their... Uh, yeah, oh, dude, yeah, exactly. Abby. Yeah, yeah. their avatar, And yeah. then they'll come back like, oh, man, I didn't mean... I think you're great. Of and, course. But then I flip it on them every time, and I've learned right. to continuously flip. Yeah. Uh, Especially when they see you live. They're like, oh, my God, you're so great. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't know. I'm like, you just... People are weird, man. Comment. That shit don't really bother me. Like, I don't know. You, sh- you can't let it bother you. There's no reason. Because we... I, if you grew up with the internet, if you were in high school or middle school when the internet came out... You already learned through tra- chat rooms and websites how the internet works. Yeah. It's the guys that didn't grow up that get really fucking hurt over these comments. It's like, oh, this shit used to happen in AIM. Oh, yeah. But I'm, <laughs> such, I, I'm, such a, I'm such a petty motherfucker. Like, I, I love that. I'm like, oh, man, I, I can't wait to. Because I won't ever be like, man, fuck you. You don't know shit. I don't, I don't do that. If I, got I write like minutes, such I'll smart do ass, cynical, like just snarky shit. And yeah. I, that's just me, naturally. That, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I get off on that, man. That shit is. I just got to look off. I can't do if it. You, if you yeah. catch me when I have a good 30 minutes, oh, you're, I'm ripping you apart. <laughs> yeah. Like, I got nothing else to do. And I will just fucking make it to where they regret it. I kept a dude up till 3 a.m. You know, Ooh. in Texas, it was one AM. <laughs> you kept him up, and, and I was sleep? like, "Yo, you boom, boom, boom!" Well, it, it was on a on a, a mutual comics post, right? And the comic, the comic was like, "Okay, guys, stop!" And I was like, "No, bro, you check your friend if you want to stop. You know, if he's gonna be insulting me, fuck it. I'm gonna keep going back, and I will blow up everybody's notifications until yeah. this guy stops." And I just fucking ripped him apart. It's I just love fun. that. And then I was like, okay, now time to go to bed. <laughs> and then you go to bed, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. What did I miss? Dope, man. So check it out. If you're listening right now to the Comedy Pop-Up Podcast, we got two of my boys in the studio, man. We're glad you're here. Uh, before we and, end, and we've got the construction outside. And oh, we yeah. got the construction. That is so loud. Hopefully y'all can't hear it, oh, but if you man. can, it's good. Yeah, they're going to hear it. eat dirt. We got, we got top-notch uh, equipment here at... at uh, Comedy Pop-Up No, it'll be fine. Because I think they can hear it just, light filter? They can is, hear it just as much as we hear it. Huh? They hear it as much as we hear it. So. Okay, cool. So listen, man, before we get out of here, a few things I want to ask you. We have a, a segment 
uh, that is like my favorite part of the show where we don't small talk on the comedy pop up. Nope. I'm gonna ask you a few questions, but before we get out of oh, here, we didn't talk about white comics, do we? We can do it. Ah, okay, let me let me. Uh, we can do sorry, it. Continue. Wrong, okay, sorry. so th- nothing against these guys, right? <laughs> but but. So, uh, you guys know Ty Rivera, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So Unbothered. Ty, Mr. Unbothered. Mr. Unbothered. So, he posted something about white comics or whatever. What do you say? Know, uh, something about uh, basically how, you know, mediocre, mediocre white comics get so much opportunity. And I, I wish I was a mediocre white comic kind of thing, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Which I... I he has a, yeah, he has a point. He has a point. I completely... Ad- Man. Right? And so, nothing against the guys on this picture. But this is the beef that I, because, you know, you saw all the white comments like, well, we don't get opportunity. Well, what do you talk? Oh, where's all my opportunity? And I'm like, the fact that this is a show or this was a night at the comedy store and there was no theme to it. Because if, if wow. any, if there was that many of people of color. Oh, yeah. There yeah. would have to be a theme. It'd have to be. A It'd theme. have to have a name. But that's standard there. Because I've is seen standard. that list of 40 people. All right. And I see one black comic. Maybe two girls, and the black comic yeah. is, already has a TV show. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, a TV that's the show one just it. to be there. That's and the anybody one that that's, that's wondering, I just showed them a picture of nine, about nine working, white, working wor- white male comics. Yep, right. On one night, on yeah. one show, and there was no theme for this show. Yeah. If if you're any color or any gender or anything, like, that's or, the or majority, female, it's a theme. It's a theme. It's not normal. It has to be. It has to be yeah. funny women of hoo hahs or the <laughs> rice and beans. Show? Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is America show. This is America show. Oh, are they? Are they making the real, the real friends? Latino spicy. So, <laughs> I was just like, that's that's the problem right there. Or, or is that they? That's standard and, too. And no audience was like, and anybody in that audience probably didn't walk out like. I tell you what bothers me about those were all like white that. guys. Yeah. yeah, I tell you what bothers me too is like being the black person in the room on shows like that. Yeah, and the stuff they say about your race. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like for me, it, it bothers the heck out of me because if I address it, I'm the angry black guy. But they can comfortably say N word jokes. Oh, and yeah. Black yeah, people yeah. do this, like, kind of thing. And I'm like, with no, not like even a. What, but, they sneak, the but they sneak here's it in with. They will, I wish they, I was black. They will fight so hard to be able to say N word in a joke. But, like, when you bring up, well, what if I bring up kite or some shit like that? Like, they don't know how to, well. Yeah. They, 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 or, they right. get, or they get butt hurt by you just saying that they're mediocre white comics. Oh, yeah. 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 They, they want to fight so hard to say the N word, but then you tell them, like, but you're mediocre. You can't yeah, get right, away right. with it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if it's like this in other cultures, but black people are taught you have to be twice, twice as, good. as good to be considered. Considered. What's the other half? Um, half as successful half or whatever. Half as successful. Yeah. I think, so, but oh, again, you, like, there's mm. different standards for. Black comics or minority comics that is white. Le- first Latino, got out here, I used to do comics. a lot of music jokes, and they were all intentional. It wasn't like just yeah. Yeah. tap dancing kind of jokes. It was just, I, I, it was really big jokes. But it's more, I'm a performer. That's what I do. Whatever. And people were like, man, you can't do that. Like you, black comic, you can't be doing music jokes. And I go to their room. They got guitars. They got power oh, yeah. presentations, oh, yeah, slides, yeah. puppets. Yeah, uh, singy songy. Um, what's the yeah. guy? Uh, Dimitri guy. He, he yeah, does the guitar yeah, and I'm song. Like, and... But they can do that, and they don't get judged. They're just a comic being creative. And for me, it's like. Are you the black comic doing music? And I'm like, it's weird that yeah. I get judged for doing that. And it's just yeah. different rules yeah. for comedy, and it sucks. It's different rules. Well, it's, then it's, you can get away the way with, it is in life, oh, though, And man. then the whole thing of not being funny and then becoming just interesting, that took over because the— What's pe- that? Oh, yeah, Because yeah, the yeah. people, the bloggers and all the motherfuckers who write, who write ups now yeah. for comedy shows. Like, this genius, genius brilliant, thought material, it's like, and, but it's not funny. But none oh, of it, they, they never all, say all funny. Stuff? Not even, oh, but just when they do reviews now on, on, it's, on it's, comics, they don't even mention funny or hilarious. Now no. it's just in, in, in intellectual and all these other. And it's not even. It's these, not even intellectual. Right, all these other Are we things. talking about all comic? All comic. Reviews? Just not all comic, but just like I think. But if, the style of all comic, like, it's we, not a lot I of punchlines. It's, uh, well, it's humorous, you know. Yeah. It's uh, it's bad storytelling, alt comic, you know. As right. in, it's it's that's the umbrella. You know what it is? You're saying, this is what I call that. it: live blogging. Yeah. A lot of comics live blog. So the thing that I'm going through right now is that this, then they just oh, like, yeah. oh, I didn't know that we we're just in your world. <laughs> right, right. Or, or the stigma of clever. Like they'll say like yeah, black clever. comics are not as clever. You know what I mean? We're, because we're more performing based. Like we get that thing. We write comics. Oh, through the wazoo, how clever yeah. and, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, interesting their joke writing well, is. Uh, like, like, so then we have to think about, man, I got to be a better dude, joke writer or. Latino comics don't even get any of that. Right. You never see any bloggers write about Latino comics. 
Yeah. They don't fucking care. And that's the thing, like, you know, you were saying, like, black people are taught to be twice as good to be uh, half as successful. The problem with Latinos is we're taught just be happy for anything. Right. man. And and that's the mentality that treats us to we should just accept this because, oh, finally, we get a meeting today. It's okay. Just be happy. It's okay. That's that's very Latino. Whatever, whatever you want. to. And, you know, I kind of get so upset because I did it on I do it constantly on my Facebook. I'm like, uh, name me. I, I said anytime I ask people to name Latino comics, especially Mexican oh, Latino yeah. comics, they got like three. They can't get past five. Five? Yeah. Oh, here we go. I did this. I, I broke. I laid this shit out when uh, when Tiffany was finally having a moment because when she blew yeah. up and hosted SNL, yeah. I said, y'all can't name me ten superstar black female comedians that are not big. Like in terms of heavy set, like yeah, yeah, yeah. take away that, and then kind of like because we had this that thing are about, not big, wow, right? Yeah, that'd After, be tough. Well, for Tiffany, I said, and you might you could might maybe use Wanda, maybe, right? Wanda crossed over, but yeah. like she was never big. I'm in, still with thinking, black folks, like, right? I, you're still yeah. thinking because when you go when you go all the way back in the history books, you got what Moms Mabley, then you got yeah. Thea Vidal. Thea, she had her moment. Yeah. Right. There's Whoopi. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. You yeah. know, you do. But a that's the thing. You, you have to do. I mean, that. look at that small number. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then there was always the black comic, like the one year at a time rule in which you start from like after 82 with Richard when he was at the pinnacle. Richard, then Eddie took over. Eddie, Eddie yeah. had it like five years. Yeah. Then one year it was Mike Damon and Sin- one year it was Damon and Sinbad. Then yeah. it was Martin. Then it was yeah, yeah, Chris yeah. Rock. Then it was Tucker and Chappelle and. It's just one at a time. One at a time. I mean, Kev's had it like the last three, four years, yeah. but you know, a little, a little and, longer than that. A little, a little longer, and then you know, if you want to sub 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 genre, you know, Hannibal took over one lane. Yeah, Carmichael's here. I think Rel is kind of like that. that yeah, next absolutely. guy yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but still, like that's such a small sample. The thing that yeah. the thing that sucks with being a Latino, but black comic, women never. You never seen that. The thing that sucks with being a, is your success is never credited to your your actual talent. It's always credited to well, Latino support. Which is a complete law, lie, but it's always like, it's right. never credit to you being funny. Oh, yeah. Like when right. Felipe won Last Comic Standing, people were going, oh, really? It's because Mexicans called in. Oh, okay, yeah, because really? Mexicans were watching Last no, Comic Standing. No, he's a monster. He's but a, that's the thing. It was never credited he's to been his a, humor. I didn't even know he was doing yeah. it like 20 years It was years credited like to, yeah. to the fact that, well, Mexicans. And it's like, no, man. No, nah. no. Nah. You know, but that's the thing that sucks is that they think, a lot of the industry thinks our audience is just out there. But they won't give us a chance to get uh, get any to audience. get out there. Yeah. yeah, to get out there, and that's very unfortunate too. Because I always mention too, I hate that uh, it, it took Sandra so Bullock co-signing George Lopez to get a show, dude. In order for that show not to get canceled, Sandra had to be like, "Well, then I'm paying for it." Against ABC, they wanted to cancel. See, because it's so funny. I was listening to Malcolm Gladwell's podcast. There's a thing called you know, like he brought up this term called moral licensing, mm. right? And moral licensing is basically like, you know, we voted for Barack. So now we can be racist. Right, right. right. We, we approved this, this Latino show for one year. Out. Yeah. So now we don't have to keep doing it. Yeah. it we, it's just like when they pick, up a sh- they, they pick up a show that they know they're going to cancel in a year or not really going to really exactly. fuck with it. Just so they say, oh, well, we, we, we gave did you guys it. a show. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Sandra Bullock saying, then I'll pay for it, ABC would have dropped that show. Yeah, which is very unfortunate. Even like, uh, I think people don't realize how even segregated comedy is in LA. Because mm. mainstream nights, just mainstream nights. It's, White night, mainstream night, but yeah. any other minority night on, at any comedy club has a very tap dancey, generic Dude, name. You have to have a fucking refried, thing. Refried, yeah. Friday. Turn up Thursdays. Dude, it's it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Chocolate Sundays. Yeah. You know, it, it's like at the time it was necessary. And but Chocolate now, Sundays ain't even an all black show. Exactly. Now it feels like. Are we still going? We still have to yeah. to say this. Yeah. You know, we still have to make it its own. But most show. people don't realize that because it was it's so normalized in LA culture. And for me, I've never felt comfortable at a lot of clubs in LA. Like I felt black. I don't like that feeling. Mm. Yeah. Like I feel like I I can't just I don't know. Like even at this one particular club, I sent in my veils for three years. Like I'm available Monday through Saturday. And oh, sometimes yeah. I would do it on days I wasn't even available, and I've never gotten a call. Shit. And they'll be like, well, we owe people favors, so we can't get you in. And I'm sitting here like, oh. I have more TV credits than anybody on that lineup. Yeah. Like anybody. And I can't even get a spot in the small room, the yeah. room that nobody, that holds 20 people. You know what I'm saying? It's a weird feeling. I'm not even bitter about it, but I know success trumps that. But when, but I, I, when I they open the door. That. I got to count that shit. Like, right. We got we to gotta, we gotta take mental notes down because if we just act like 
you know, be blind to everything. You kind of have to keep a blind eye, but also record everything that yeah. like, you, you've done. Yeah, so you, part of my success that's, is that's being able to open it. doors yeah. for people like me. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because like, I don't want to be the one that got through and be like, oh, finally I got through. Like, no, like I want other people that look like me is up and coming because it's a huge generation of people like our everybody in this room that has a voice that's dope that's that fun. deserves to be in these uh, the room with the nine white face people. Yeah, yeah. Like, my, we deserve to be on those shows. Exactly. My big thing for the past nine years was to prove to audiences that they could laugh at a Latino comic without even knowing he was a Latino. Absolutely. Right. And for... You do a great job of that, too. Yeah, and it, it, it for... I mean, I would not write one anything revealing that I was a Latino just to prove, like, right. had no clue. I don't have to write that I'm black, though. I'm kind of always gonna look black. Well, yeah, I, yeah. you right, know what? Right, right, right. You know the the thing is, I'm doing it Superstar for I'm black it, comedian. I'm right, doing right, it for right. the Latino You're stereotype doing it, doing it of them. like where Absolutely. they think where you know. Because I've heard George Lopez, and it's more than Lopez. There's and it's Costello, like, no, I'm there's... going to show that yeah. you, can, you can do this. And it and I do tell some Latino comics like it's going to be tougher for you because you immediately scream Mexican. You're right, right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't but get away from that. Do you but. feel like you've ever had moments where a white comic has said something about another minority and they thought you were white? They yeah, and confide then, in you. So where, where do you where do you put that? You check them, you, or you, you just check them, or like, you, like, you just like let them let them speak. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> I correct them on on. Anything they think, because the problem with comics is that we like to talk in. in we uh, like an audience. We like to talk like, but we also like to talk like it's a solid fact. And mm. it's not. So yeah, they'll yeah, say yeah. something like, well, you know, Latinos get a lot of support. Or I mean, you know, black comics have it easy. And then you correct them. Yeah. But exactly what you said. Oh, yeah. I gotta, Name this many comics. Right. Me the, and that's, I check them like, okay, let's back up your claim. And I make them walk oh, yeah, back. Yeah. Oh, they, 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 oh, yeah. Black's got all the TV shows. Like, you guys have Atlanta. It's like, and, okay, uh, let's Black-ish. walk it back. And I'm like, okay, how many uh, black shows are on the network of ABC? Yeah. And if Black-ish? you do. ish yeah, that's it. That's it. But I like to walk them back. Yeah, and that's yeah. that. I will check them because yeah. I'm like, okay, let me see what yeah. you just said, and let's yeah. fix this. Yeah. And you know what's funny too? Even when Can I want stand up for diversity, which the whole purpose of it is get more diversity on their network, I guess I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I won. I went on one audition because there was no black shows with no black people on it. The entire network for the entire year. I wow. Won. Like like before this is before the before Carmichael? the boom happened. Before yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I went for. But it was like a long run for ten years. But like I went for was, taco truck owner. Yeah, uh, illegal immigrant that works in the back. Yeah, uh, a twenty-six-year-old Chicano that only gets his superpowers from drinking and smoking. Yeah, those were the auditions that Shit. I was getting. Yeah, and I think I only auditioned for either gay black man or awkward black man. Really? And I, you know, I didn't fit either one of them. But yeah, yeah. they was like, "Hey, you should just go on this audition and check it out." And I'm like, "But that's it for the entire net, like entire network. There was no black people in the entire network for like at least three years until yeah, until Carmen, yeah. maybe yeah. one." But he was awkward. He was just like, yeah, the black guy that no, most black people don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's crazy to see the trends. Yeah, but yeah. I, I love correcting that shit though. Like they, you can't you can't talk about y'all getting a lot of stuff or y'all having a year with um get out and shit no, like it that. Feels I'm like, like it. I'm like, okay, fine. You want to count Tyler Perry and Jordan Peele's movie yeah. and a, and a Wayne's brother movie every three years. And after that, then give me the rest of the movies with all black cast yeah. and shit like and that. I, and I shut it, the fuck up. You know, man. and I check them a lot on that too because I'm like. If Get Out failed, they wouldn't be like, well, I guess people just weren't interested. They'd say, no, black people aren't aren't stars. Right. You know, oh, that's yeah, we like, don't draw. That's other than they yeah, don't draw like, overseas. You remember the movie The Wall with Matt Damon or whatever, The Great Wall, where he's the, the savior shit. of China? Yeah. They needed a white face to headline it because if it was all Asian and it failed, they'd be like, well, Asians just can't headline movies. Right. They needed right. Matt Damon in there to take the fucking hit. Yeah. Because if if... And, and Matt failed. Damon, fa- if it failed, yeah. they were just like, well, I guess this movie just wasn't a hit. Yeah. Maybe it was marketed wrong. And that's the part that people don't understand about being a minority is that if you do get the chance to do, I'm going to do an all black cast. I'm going to do an all. If it fails, they blame all of your race. Right. The race they don't just blamed. say the Marvel the time where most of the black movies they gave a green light to were all Ensemble cast, blacks, like every black celebrity. Oh, yeah, it's got to be the biggest. That, yeah, 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 from the '90s or a comedian. So how they did the, the movie. Uh, what was it? Gods of Egypt, and it was like all white people. Yep. Like, yeah, come yeah, on, yeah, bro. yeah, Egypt. Like, come on, bro. Really? Yeah. Really? Egypt. Y'all want to focus? Y'all want? Really? Y'all want to put no black people in Egypt? Every statue got a wide nose. Come on, really, bro? Yeah. Get Christian Bale's white ass out of here. <laughs> right. Right. And they're like, all right, fine. We'll put some black people. We're cutting the budget. Or even the show Prison Break. <laughs> Prison There's not a lot of black people to show Prison Break, but in real life. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's all us. Yeah, that's too sad. This is what they say. But that that's that's too depressing. We People don't want to say. Do that. Yeah, they, they like, put that one Latino in there. When Christella yeah. pitched her show, she wanted to pitch as the family, basically a Latino Roseanne mm-hmm. is what it, what the show was going to be. And the execs were just like, yeah, but it's depressing to see Mexicans live in poverty. Whereas it was okay for Roseanne, but we don't want we don't want that out there. We don't want we don't actually want to face the reality that most right. Latinos and, and, live and in let, the same and house. Sure you said we don't want to face. And exactly. let's put, let's put beautiful soap opera working Mexicans in it. Exactly. And it's not can't reflect. they live in? Can't they have a great job in a big house? Right. Right. It's I like, mean, and and that that is a reality in some Mexican house. There are some successful Mexican. There are, there are a lot, but, but, but her, story her story wasn't. Her story wasn't. Her story. She grew up in a fucking diner, right. an yeah. abandoned diner was her house. Yeah. yeah, and they wouldn't let her tell that story. She had to upgrade her life. Now, if you're if you are yeah. a successful, and you're like, no, my life was like this. I didn't have immigrant parents. But that's not for everybody. Yeah, yeah, not, that's not the norm. You know. Yeah. We're just now breaking ground. Right. Yeah. Can't do one about these ice agents coming to get uh, ice agents coming to get these people from work. Yeah. And church. It's too real. It's too real. <laughs> all right. Cool. That being okay. said, man, uh, we're gonna. That was some uh, real shit. Uh, actually, first of all, is there anything? No, I'll do that in. in. Okay. Cool. So listen, I got a couple questions I ask uh, because we don't small talk on the comedy pop up podcast. Yeah. And I would love to know what you guys think. There's no right or wrong answer, and feel free to answer however you want to. All right. First question is if you could do Lunch with somebody dead or alive, who would it be? It could be anybody. Lunch? How long is the lunch? And what family or where famous? We, where like we whatever. At? Doesn't matter. You choose. Oh, I ha- have lunch with Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy? At um at a really good restaurant. Axel Foley Eddie or now Eddie? I, now Eddie, because he has way more wisdom and he's still hilarious from what I hear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Eddie. I'd have lunch with Eddie. Dope. And did you say why? Yeah, because I would just want to to have a conversation with, with, like, the guy I idolized, man. Like, I just, you know, he inspired my comedy. The first piece of comedy I ever watched was uh, Raw. Yeah. I've se- I, Were you allowed to watch it or you had to sneak it? I watched it with my mother, man. Oh, word? Mom's is cool like that. Mom's Raw. Yes. Um, I've watched every film of his and every stand-up that he's ever put out. And, What's your favorite? Uh, top two. Top three. Uh, three movies? Yep. Um, Coming to America. Of course. Uh, Nutty Professor. Okay. And um, Life. Bo- Boomerang. Right, I love, love, love life. Life, life. I, I, no, favorite. life is great. I'd life probably be favorite. top ten. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's just inspired my career. I still look up to him. I think he's the one guy you could say has dominated every genre of comedy. When you think about the genre, animated, sketch, stand up, buddy cop, family. He has a classic in every one of yeah, them. Yeah. So I just, yeah, I just wanted to just talk to him. Yo, what about you, Nick? God, man, I don't know, bro. That's so tough. We got time. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I do on the meter. Uh, who, who would I talk to? I, every every famous name family from, member can be anybody. Yeah, it was everything from like John Leguizamo to Lucio Ball to all that that I'm balancing in my head to even Dr. Dre. Yeah, you know, just to get into the mindset of of uh, of another genius. But I guess you know, like a Malcolm Gladwell. Dope. That's your guy. Malcolm Gladwell is a fucking. He would amaze me. Yeah, you know, and just being able to bring. Because I like the way he breaks down, you know, society. Mm-hmm. And I would want to talk to him as a comic who loves breaking down society mm-hmm. and see if my thoughts match up with, yeah, you know, in that way. Like, it's a weird chess move. Yeah. Like, I know you're a genius. Uh, are any of my thoughts valid? How genius am I? Right. Yeah, yeah. Am I close to like, genius? Like, am, am I doing anything Same that, ballpark? that's... that's yeah. Am I on the path? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Do I have concepts that, that kind of make sense? And that would probably be it for me. Dope. All right, second question. What uh, smell or sound reminds you of home? And it doesn't have to be your, like, your home. It'd be like your home home, like back home. Uh, like smell. what sound or smell reminds you of home? Uh, bugs. Bugs at night. That, you don't hear that in L.A. That loud screaming bug. Yeah, 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 just that, that yeah. weird country. Just yeah, you know, you when you screaming early in the morning. Uh, yeah, garbage. I guess this dude it's smell like garbage. That's so New York. Oh yeah, because New York. Yeah, yeah, it's disgusting. But yeah. like when, when I'm when, around garbage, it's yeah, that's New York. Yeah. When I go to like the country and I yeah. walk outside and you can hear the country sound of just oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, loud it's a loud yeah, silence fuck, yeah man, I forgot about this yeah. I like the smell of bacon and my mom used to use this stuff on the floor before she vacuumed to like make the house smell good yeah like she would sprinkle it on the floor uh, and then you vacuum yeah, it yeah, and make yeah. it, the house smell uh, good that's pleasant yeah yeah that's that's the sound <laughs> okay <laughs> alright cool last question uh, unless we got more time uh, what's uh, what's the one thing you learned about yourself from your last relationship or it could be your current if you're in one <laughs> about yourself, not the person. 
What's myself. that laugh, Nick? Let's go. What have I learned about first. myself for, for my last relationship? Yes, sir. Man, I have learned that, dude, I've learned so much. You know what? I've learned that uh, I need to get out of my own way with girls and I need to. I did learn that there is a time where no pussy is 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 better anymore. Like literally you've had some some top great sex with somebody that you were in love with and that none nothing even the hottest girl doesn't add even a fraction better excitement and I'd rather go back to the person that, that That's a uh, real grown man statement. Dude, you, when you learn like you oh, know you what? Press I've, a button, I've you sleep. Never mind. When, All right. Stop, when when that's you've not, learned that's a button, that's not that's the law and order shit. Right, when, right, right. When you've learned that that you know I've I've been lucky in life to have have you know been romantic with a lot of women. You know, not tons, but a lot. I learned that it was like, yeah, that moment that you feel that real, that like this is the one. I wish I would have stopped there. Yep. Because it was like it hasn't gotten better since. Yeah, because there's no governor in your life. Being a comedian. That you can for the rest of your that's what I was like telling you, nigga. I was like, there's gonna be a time where you're like, okay, this is fun, but there's no girl fun that fun at 18 versus fun at 40 is not the same thing. There's no girl so, that blows your mind more than the one that you completely connect with. Right. And that's the same. And you meet that once in life. You're like, am I gonna settle down even though I feel like I'm not yeah, ready man. and enjoy it? Or and I want it. I, I deleted my every, I just got rid of everything. I yeah. was like, I got rid of my stable. And I'm Wrong like, man. she's the one, and yeah. she just wasn't ready. Yeah. And it's like, fuck. So you regretted yeah. the regret, deleting the stable? Huh? Did you regret the, deleting the stable? No, it's it, it comes in and out, man. Once you yeah, okay. once you know how it's to get life. it, you get it. Okay. But, uh, you know, like... <laughs> the stable really, is a mentality. Was, you know what? There was only one time I did. There was a moment when I did regret it where I'm like, fuck, I'm completely alone. And then I realized that, oh, I can get it again. Uh, and then I got it again. I was like, oh, well, I can always get it then. What, what, Why well, want to go back to the one that I fucking love? Yeah. <laughs> what what I see you processing, which is hilarious. Yeah, I am trying to, because I'm trying to word it correct. It's hard to word it. But what I learned about myself is that um, I'm not a, I'm not a dog in, in terms of like, like I, I'm not, I've just never been that dude that like calls on the chicks at 3 a.m. I'm not a dog either, I man. fuck you and don't talk to you, whatever like that. I just, I'm a really just nice dude and I fuck you affectionately, but I still just want it friendly. Like, yeah. and I always mislead, I guess, because of how I treat girls. So they believe that it could be more than what it is, but I'm really just, I give a nice balance of being somebody friendly and I care about you the same way I care about another friend. But when I, when I'm with you, I'm just going to kind of connect with you in a boyfriend. Like I give you boyfriend sex, but I'm just your friend. And so this yeah. is the other part I've been of there. This too. is why I had, that's to, where I lived. I had to manage yeah. myself because I function like a husband. Right. Period. I like giving advice. I see people's potential. I'm going to give you all this yeah. next level advice about your life and your personal and who you are and what yeah. you can be kind of thing. And then attach that to sex. They're going to fall in love with you. Yeah. But again, at a certain point, you have to take some kind of ownership because you know what you're doing. Right. right like right. you legit know what you're doing. So yeah. you have to be like, look, I can't continue to do this because this is not fair to them. Because as much as you want to be like, it's their fault for committing to it. Like it's your fault for leading them on and creating this environment. So, yeah. but I tell them, I said, look, I, I can't. It doesn't matter what you I don't, say. I don't. Your actions I is, know, I'm a boyfriend. And no, I'm my actions like, is, I'm a nice dude. No, no, yeah. <laughs> That's what you're saying to you know yourself. What, you know what, man? I was in the same exact place as you, and I, I still all am. And it's funny because it is that I'm just not. I'm you, not you raised. To, I'm not I, I, like but I didn't have wolves. You want? Well, I had wolves who taught me shit, but like I, I've just never been some communicating in three words and and what and you know the, fuck the, you and leave you or, or I hit this, you when, man, I, when I want to. The thing is, you're a you're a comic. You're a CEO. You're your own brand. You're your own person. You're a restaurant owner. You're the restaurant. You're the food. You are everything, and in this development time, yes, it's you have to be selfish in order to be successful, and yeah. that's the thing that that it's hard with relationships because in the end, if you want to get to where you like you said you want to get out there, it's about you. Yeah, and and I've had a lot of girls that are like I feel like I'm second to a lot of things, and I'm like yeah, you're second to me. Oh yeah, I, I, they know that too. And yeah. but and and that's that's the hardest thing for them to understand, and it sucks. Yeah. But if you tell them no, you're second to me. That's on them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It I get sucks. that. And, I, and oh, you I, feel like I, shit. I, I don't miss, and I always like you have the like conversations. Like I don't go weeks or whatever without not establishing how I feel about stuff, how it's yeah. gonna move, so that way you're not thrown off guard. 
I just know that I'm naturally affectionate because that's just I'm just in my that's in my that's how I am my yeah. naturally be affectionate. But it's it, it's not to the point where I know that I'm doing something else and, and meaning to do something else. Like I know that I'm just cool with you and I'm nice and I don't know have a problem. And you just out, got your out. your own place. And I just got my own fucking dude. Place. When you just get your own place, you're like I want to fucking yeah enjoy. I'm inviting my place. people over. Right. We all having a right. good time, but it doesn't mean that I'm I'm ready to yeah. be exclusive I don't want with you, you to live and be here. committed to you. Uh, seven days a week going forward. Like, yeah. I'm a sometimes. Completely understand. But just me I know. being yeah, where you've you been you're through at, it. I'm telling you, like, there's going to be a certain point where no matter what, it's going to be your fault. Okay. How much you like announcing? Oh, yeah. No, it's always uh, your announcing, fault, bro. oh, yeah, I'm just out here doing my Is it because we just have to own it as men, or is it because I had, women can't handle that? It, it, they can't handle it. I had a girl. You still they, have to be they, responsible for you. Like, okay. again, like, I, again, I knew what I was doing. Like, deep down, as much as you're like, oh, I'm just trying to live my life. But again, you give off boyfriend. You give off nice guy. You yeah. be, you're doing charming stuff. You're taking girls on a date. You're doing stuff, and you're like, oh, it's just sex. Like, no, it doesn't work that. You can't give her a husband dick and be like, oh, she's just my buddy. <laughs> it doesn't translate. Because at a yeah. certain point, like, right. it's cool now. It's cool now. At a certain point, you, like, bro. yeah, it's, all right. it's you. And you don't want to hear it. But That's I'll say fine. this, too, and I'm going to give both of y'all this, too, because I had to learn as well. Um, everybody here knows that comedy is our first love. It's right. not a conversation. It's not to go yeah. to. But there's going to come a certain time in your life where... If you meet the right one, she'll get you and give you space to make mistakes and and yep. pursue your craft. And it's not a burden to pursue your dreams and love her at the same time. Mm. Now you know deep down, comedy's your first love. Right. But there's still a time like there's a com- comedy's all about balance and compromise. That's Every comedy club That's we facts. get free drinks. Every comedy club you can get chicks. Every comedy club you can get food. Every comedy club you can chase whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But again, it's back to balance. So for you, my man. So it's for you. It's back to balance. And can you? Pursue your dreams. Can you have a family? Mm. Can you manage your monster while you're on the road and like still be successful? Like it's all about balance. So again, it's possible to find the right one that'll let you do what you do. Yeah. And still be successful at the same time. So don't limit God to, well, I gotta pursue my dreams and then later on love. Cause like again, like you're gonna have a reminiscent moment, like, man, I wish I would have yeah. settled down when I could because now I'm out here by myself and I have all the success and I did it by myself and who can I trust because I did everything by myself and there's nobody in my space right now that I really legit trust with my life and my secrets. Yeah. yeah. This is my little two cents. So, <laughs> all right, before we get out of here, man, if you can tell me uh, what you got going on and what's your social media handles that can follow you. Oh, uh, Nick Comic. Uh, I do podcasts. <laughs> no, that was like. Easy. What do you mean? What I got going on? Yeah, Nick Comic. Follow me on TV Nick Comic. Shows, shows coming up. No, nah, man, nothing, dude. I got nothing. <laughs> oh, you have to say it like that. Oh my I god, I got fucking nothing, bro. <laughs> dude, I did. I did a an me, industry. Hug, I did an industry panel where I was talking about how to do a late night set to like comics. Yeah, and they're like, so where did doing the Tonight Show get you? I'm like, on this panel to talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That was, yeah, that was it. There you go. Um, I'm I've been doing improv. I I I, uh, I picked that up a lot more. I took UCB when I was in New York, and I'm I, gonna go check on my car. I'll be right back. Check on the car. Um, so yeah, I've been doing. Uh, I got an. Imp- I'm with an improv team called Cornbread Kitchen, and we are making a lot of waves in that community. We're a black team majority. Okay, and I'm proud for of that. For the culture, for the culture, man, it's, it's always what I do it for. The name is extra black too. Yeah, for Cornbread Kitchen. You don't get more black than Cornbread Kitchen, right? So we uh, sure burnt Cornbread Kitchen, <laughs> hot water Cornbread. <laughs> Hot water cone break. Okay, go ahead. So we do a lot of shows, and I think the next step eventually we want to start doing like content and maybe work on putting together like you know for us to tour and do variety shows because we can all do sketches. I do stand up. We have another stand up, and then of course as a team we improv. So I'm I'm excited about that. We're performing this Saturday at the Clubhouse in hey. Hollywood. Hey, uh, and then you can follow me at Nick of Comedy, and then I'm also on the network. I host my own podcast called For the Culture. And uh, yeah, man. So you know, follow that, support that. That's dope, man. If you're tuning into the Comedy Pop Up Podcast, I'm your host, comedian Ron G. If you don't mind, please follow me at comedian R O N G. And I start uh, in two weeks filming uh, my TV show for Nickelodeon, Cousins for Life. You can check out the hashtag Cousins for Life. Yeah. Also, uh, I got my 30 minute Comedy Central special that airs this fall, and I have a movie called Two Minutes of Fame with Jay Farrow. Cat Williams and Kiki Palmer and a lot of other dope stuff. And every Sunday I host at the World Famous Laugh Factory Chocolate Sunday's Comedy Show at 7 o'clock and 9.30. Uh, you can just follow me on Comedian Ron G and I'll post all the information for that. And we do a really cool show called Comedy Pop-Up. It's called, just follow us at Comedy Pop-Up LA or just Comedy Pop-Up. It's at Comedy Pop-Up and for the network it's at CPU Podcast. There you go. That's what's happening. Also, we do a lot of really dope uh, shows around uh, LA. Comedy Pop-Up brand. It's really dope. Uh, show for up and coming comics that are really amazing and you'll love it. 
including my man Paul. Do you get a chance to host any of them? Yeah. Uh, me and Nick, actually, like we're kind of regular hosts on the comedy yeah, pop-up show. Yeah, that's so, so dope. And I'm proud really of you, dope. Paul, man. I've got a chance to watch you grow. Oh, thank and you. Sit yeah, man. Cheer you on, man. So you've been doing your thing. You hustle That's hard. right. Now yeah, man. To it. I appreciate it. You're doing your thing, man. So that being said, man, thank you for joining us for another episode of Comedy Pop-Up Podcast. I want to thank both of the Knicks for stopping by. Yeah. And, this uh, is the Double Nick mics. contest, man. Appreciate that, I mean, man. Uh, podcast. Two Knicks. Two, Two Knicks. Knicks. And Nickelodeon. Hey, let's go.